Hey everybody, welcome to part 7 of my React, Redux, and Webpack tutorial series. Uh, in my last video I talked a little bit about why you'd want to use Flux to manage the state of your front-end application. In this video I'm going to talk about why you'd want to use Redux as the specific implementation of Flux. Now, uh, so here I have the Redux GitHub repo up. Uh, the the one-line description of Redux is it's a predictable state container for JavaScript apps. Uh, it's not really an implementation of Flux, I'd say, and I think it even says in some of the docs that it's inspired by Flux. Uh, but ultimately, it's more of a functional uh, style paradigm for handling state, uh, and it's also influenced by functional programming languages like Elm. Uh, and so because of this kind of different take on uh, using this functional programming paradigm, it's a little bit hard to wrap your head around at first, but I've actually found that once you do kind of understand what's going on, it makes it a lot easier to reason about your app and use it to manage the state of your app. So uh, in this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of kind of the general concepts of Redux. Uh, I'll diagram out a little bit how you might want to think about it um, in terms of having state, passing it down into your components, uh, and then in the next video we'll actually start implementing it. So let's move over here. So there are three main concepts of React, uh, I'm sorry, of Redux. The first is that there's a single state tree, so all of the state of your entire application uh, resides in one one state tree or really one big object. Um, this means that there's a kind of a single source of source of truth and although it might seem clunky at first if you just think of putting all your state into one object, it really does help simplify the mental model around your state and again keeps that single source of truth and it, I think it really helps a developer reason about their app. Uh, and we'll see you as we continue talking about how we can kind of break it down and still modularize it uh, to make it easier um, to think about specific aspects of the state at any given time. The second point here is that state is read only. Uh, this just means that nothing is writing to state, nothing is changing state. So no components in your app um, are changing state. Um, they are going through actions. They're basically describing what they want done. That's the only thing that the components or lower level things in your app do, uh, and the state itself is read-only. Um, and we saw that in our last video uh, talking about Flux and how components and any event that happens can fire off an action. Uh, in some implementations of Flux though, these actions result in writing to state, modifying state. And as we know, when you modify something over time, uh, it gets hard to debug, hard to know what's going on. So Redux makes uh, state read-only. And you might be wondering, well, if state is read-only, how do we actually change state? How do we update something, which is what we need to do during the lifetime of an app? The answer is in this third point, which is closely related to the second one. It says reducers are pure functions. So Redux implements this concept of a reducer. But all that a reducer is, is a function. And these reducers are what is actually changing, um, is updating the state. It's not changing it, it's updating it. And how does it do that? Well, reducers are basically functions that take in state and an action. And remember, the actions are fired off and created by components or some event that wants to update the state. And the action itself has a type which is just kind of the name of the action and then some, maybe some data which is going to be used to update the state. So these components uh, can fire off an action which describes what they want done. We have the current state and what a reducer is, it takes these two and it returns new state. This is what we mean when we say it's a pure function. Um, it means that uh, it does not modify the state, it returns a new one. And there are many ways you can do it. Um, there are simple ways where you 
you know, make a slice of an array, which doesn't modify the array, makes a new array. Um, you can use libraries like immutable.js to make sure you're returning a new state. But ultimately, the core concept of Redux is that we have one state tree and we define functions that are really simple in nature and they're pure. So they take in state and an action and they return a new state. Let's see what this looks like a little bit with a diagram that looks a little bit more like the diagram I showed in the last video uh, with just general flux. So uh, in this case, we have we have our components over here. Um, this is just a large component tree. Uh, I simplified it to just a few components. These components are going to want to update the state. This might be a button uh, that a user clicks or a toggle. Uh, and we're, we want to change the state in some way. <coughs> Excuse me. So these components uh, fire off actions. And uh, again, an action has a type. Um, an action is just an object with a type like, you know, toggle, right, in this contrived example. And then it might have data like what the toggle is. Or in this case, you would just change it to the other one, but it might be like the data is on. The user toggled it on. And that, that's supposed to be curly braces. And this is all that an action is. Now, um, the other concept, again, is that React, uh, sorry, Redux keeps all state in a single state tree. And the store here is kind of the, you can think of it as the manager of this single object. It doesn't let you write to it. Um, it has a function, a method called get state. And this is that read only aspect. So at different times during the Redux lifecycle, you're gonna wanna get state or know about the current state. So it can allow you to do that. The other thing it has is a dispatch uh, method. The dispatch method can take in an action, like this example we have here, and it can um, it then dispatches that action to. Um, so okay, let me step back. The idea of the dispatcher is that it takes in an action and allows the state to get updated. So how so? In Redux, how do we do that? It's the reducers, as I mentioned before, that take in an action and the current state from get state and return a new state. And the dispatch uh, is what actually takes in the action, um, gets the new state from the store, and then passes uh, those two things off to the reducers. And if we go back to here, those are the two things that the reducers need, the current state and the action. Oops. Sorry about that. So the dispatcher takes these two. This comes in. This comes over. And then it combines them and passes it off to your reducers. And in the simplest case, we might only have one reducer that handles the entire state tree. Remember, all of the state is in one state tree, one object. So um, in a very simple case, you would have one reducer that uh, can manage the whole state. And what a reducer generally looks like, it generally looks like a switch statement, or not looks like, is basically, or has a switch statement. Uh, and the switch statement basically, a switch statement looks for conditions that match. So you're going to switch on. Um, you're going to switch on the action dot type. So remember, down here, uh, the type of the action uh, is kind of the name of the action. It's, it's the specific action that does something to the state. So the reducer says, uh, you know, it looks at the action type. And for each different action type, a reducer knows how to update state, how to return a new state. So in this case, we would have a case this is just kind of a standard switch statement uh, case where the switch is toggle. And then in this case, we would know what to do. So in this case, uh, we're setting some type of state. Maybe we, maybe as part of our state tree up here, um, we have like toggle status as a property. And so 
um, this one would return, um, you know, state that toggle status. Um, Yeah, so it would return, uh, we would have access to data. So we would, uh, we wouldn't set this equal to action.data because that would be modifying it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into this. But basically we then update, um, ultimately we want to make a copy of this. So, um, how I have it written here is that I'm setting state.toggle status to the action.data, which is on. Uh, and this is actually modifying state, which is not what we'd want to do. Um, and there are a variety of methods to do this, and we'll get into them more. But basically, you would make a copy of state, uh, and then you would set its property toggle status. So there'd be this new object you'd have, and you'd set its toggle status property to action.data and return that. So we'll get more into that uh, in a bit. Um, and so that's the core concept of how state actually gets updated. Now, the dispatcher dispatches it to the reducers uh, functions. And I said in a simple app, you could have just one reducer that takes in the whole of state. Um, but I also mentioned before that there are ways to kind of break the state down into the mo more modular chunks that help you think about it. And so that's where the concept of reducer composition comes in. And uh, what this means is that we can define multiple reducers. So we can have like a toggle reducer and we can have maybe like, you know, if we're doing to-dos, like we'd have a to-do reducer, which we will in the next video or two. Uh, and then we would define those uh, based on the part of, you know, they would only handle certain actions and only be able to update certain parts of the state tree. And then there would be a, a comp there's a reducer composition function uh, which basically a compose function which just combines all of them and so when a dispatcher dispatches an action and a state to the reducer compose the reducer compose knows which pieces of the state to send to which reducer and then those either do something if they can or they know about the action or not and then they send it back uh, let's put the arrow they send it back to the store with this, they compose them together to a new state tree and the store gets its updated state tree. Now the last piece of this puzzle is that once the store has an updated state tree, there are certain components that need to know about it. So maybe this component over here would really like to know about the toggle status to update its style or to display something on the page. And so components can kind of um, subscribe They subscribe to store updates. And in general, you want higher level components to be the ones that subscribe and then you know pass it down as props. And what Redux provides in a, a library called React Redux, which is kind of a React binding for Redux, uh, provides some tools for us to use. Um, one of them is this connect function where we kind of, any component with a connect function We'll get any. We'll get the new state anytime uh, a new state gets updated in the store. Uh, and there's also like a, a um, there's also a component called provider, which just helps to hook up the store to the connect functions. And you can have connect functions on on any component, uh, and then the connect functions can take which pieces of the state that they need for that section of your app, because maybe this section of the app needs the to-do reducer, or the to-do aspect, uh, the to-do section of the state tree, whereas another needs to know about the toggle status. Um, and so lastly, I want to talk, maybe I'll go back to this slide, a little bit about why you'd want to re use Redux over another Flux implementation. I think one of the cool things is um, it's actually a really simple library. It's only, I don't know, like 100 lines of code. It's really not a library. It's really more of um, a paradigm, uh, kind of like how Flux is, but it's it's almost a simpler one. And it's this functional paradigm where everything's a pure function. And what it allows you to do is kind of not have this um, 
not have this state that's being mutated over time. You have uh, you have like state. You have like snapshots of, of what your state is. Uh, if this is time, wow. If this is time, you have these snapshots of state, and you know at each point what the action was, and you know what the previous state was, and you know what the current the the new state is, uh, and it allows you to really debug your app much e much more easily. You kind of know exactly what's happening in your app at every single point in time. And it even allows you to do really cool debugging things as a developer, like going back in time. So let's say we have, we have all these actions being fired. Uh, we can log every single state, action, new state, state, action, new state. So we can kind of keep track of it in the console when we're developing. And if we find a bug here, uh, instead of like going through all these actions, which might be typing things in and making to dos, we can just like replay these actions. It's called time travel debugging. Uh, and the reason you can do this is because we have a history of we never mutated the state. So at every point we know what the state was and what the exact action was that made the new state. Uh, and it's because they're pure functions, they're never going to change. So they're never modifying something in the browser or something like that. So with the same input, a pure function means with the same input, you get the exact same output. And because of that, we can replay these events really fast and we can actually time travel and kind of X these out and go back in time to this point in time uh, where we want to check out something that happened. So that's kind of a general background on why we want to use Redux. Uh, I think you need, or I suggest you, you know, not be intimidated by kind of a steeper learning curve at the beginning with this different way of thinking about state using pure functions. Because once you get over it, it's actually really fun to use. The developer tools are really awesome. And uh, I think it actually is simpler. Uh, there's a lot less um, having to manage in your mind how your app is set up because it's all very explicit and it's all very testable and it's all very consistent. So that's about it for this part. Uh, in my next video, we're actually going to uh, see how we use this uh, provider component and the connect, um, the connect methods to hook up our components to the store. We'll look at how we create a store by defining reducers and then creating the store. Uh, and we'll look at how easy it is to set up actions uh, that can be used to update the state. So see you then.